ischemic heart disease is a problem that affects about half of all American men and around a third of all American women. And about a third of your patients in your lifetime will die for is from ischemic heart disease if we don't get better at uh, handling it. The big thing about ischemic heart disease is that a lot of the risk factors are preventable. Diabetes is probably the most important risk factor. And though it's not completely preventable, it is something that we uh, can prevent in some cases and, and manage in others. Smoking is uh, the biggest preventable risk factor. Hypertension is something that we can control. Hypercholesterolemia, we're getting better at. And then, of course, family history, age, and gender are risk factors as well. And uh, the main types of coronary artery disease include stable angina, uh, which is caused by atherosclerosis. So this is the narrowing of the arteries that you don't have any symptoms unless you're uh, exercising the heart. And uh, when the heart needs more blood and can't get it because of the narrow arteries, that's when you get the angina. Unstable angina and instemi are often considered to be on a spectrum together. They're caused by transient clotting of atherosclerotic vessels where the unstable angina represents clotting that uh, is transient and goes away uh, before there's any damage to the heart. And the end STEMI is going to be when, when there is heart damage because the clot is not resolved quickly enough. Prince Metal's angina, which I've spelled incorrectly here, is caused by coronary artery vasospasm. It's not well understood and it's not as, as common as these others. And then, of course, the ST elevation, the MI, is the, is the classic uh, MI, which uh, often causes death. So in diagnosis, the history is a, uh, an important tool. If we have uh, chest pain on exertion that's relieved by rest and uh, nitroglycerin, then that's going to be stable angina. And uh, chest pain at rest is going to be either unstable angina, angina an instemi, or a prince metal angina. If it's not really by rest and it's accompanied by diaphoresis, nausea, vomiting, and dyspnea, then it could be uh, ST elevation in mind. The EKG is the next tool that, that we use, probably going to be the first tool that we use if we're suspecting an MI. So ST elevation is going to be seen with uh, STEMIs and with Prince Metal Angina. So Prince Metal Angina is sometimes hard to tell apart from, from STEMIs, but it's usually going to be more transient. And uh, also you're not going to have any Q waves or troponin levels. So Q waves are associated just with STEMIs. ST depression and T wave inversion, you can see it with uh, both uh, instemis or stable, unstable angina. The uh, confirmatory diagnostic technique is angiography. And uh, so w if, we, if we have an abnormal EKG uh, and uh, we suspect the diagnosis of coronary artery disease, then we're probably going to get an angiogram. And then labs are, are uh, used to help us uh, rule out actual damage to the heart. So uh, we've made the diagnosis. Now we need to treat the angina. So if it's an acute uh, management situation, then sublingual nitroglycerin is, is the mainstay of treatment. You can do it up to three doses uh, and the doses in three to five minute intervals. Beyond that, uh, we're going to have to find some different ways to treat it. If we're uh, talking about long-term treatment, uh, longer-acting nitrates can be used, uh, beta blockers, aspirin. But the big thing is going to be smoking cessation and treating the hyperlipidemia. Those are the big ones that you can control. And then folate is, uh, is being looked at as a possible uh, way to 
treat uh, chronic angina. Angioplasty is a mainstay of, treat of treatment. Uh, with angioplasty, if we use uh, GP2B and 3A antagonists, then we are less likely to get uh, um, uh, recurrent. And surgery for the cases where uh, angioplasty doesn't uh, look like it will be effective. So this table goes over uh, treating unstable angina at varying levels of risk. So uh, a low level of risk would mean that uh, you're not suspecting that we're going to have a recurrence of the angina or uh, an MI. And those are going to be the patients that uh, have uh, resting pain under 20 minutes and uh, that pain is relieved by nitroglycerin. Those patients will treat with aspirin, uh, oxygen, beta blocker, and sublingual nitroglycerin. If in addition to that uh, resting pain, we have uh, an increased duration of pain or T-wave inversion and ST depression, then uh, we're going to probably add on a longer acting nit nitroglycerin and possibly heparin. If we uh, have a more pronounced ST depression, uh, acute pulmonary edema, and uh, troponin levels, then uh, we're probably going to want to add on heparin for sure, maybe a nitro drip, and if there are uh, troponins or CKMB, then we'll add a GP2B, GP3A antagonist. If we have a STEMI, under six hours old, then uh, we're going to use uh, TPA or streptokinase. TPA, w we add heparin. Or if we have a cath lab nearby, then we'll, we'll go in for angioplasty. Uh, CABG is, is going to be used uh, rarely in an acute situation, but uh, to help prevent future events. And then these people are going to get aspirin and beta blockers always. Statins are uh, used to, of course, improve lipid profiles. But there's some evidence to say that uh, in MI patients, they're actually more helpful just in decreasing inflammation. And that might be why they help uh, improve or reduce mortality and morbidity. O2 and morphine for pain, ACE inhibitors f to reduce remodeling, and then of course again we want to stop smoking and exercise. So these people are going to go home with a, a goal to stop smoking. If they did get a stent, they need clopidogrel for a year, and then aspirin, nitroglycerin, beta blockers, and statins we talked about. So of course this isn't intended to be used to guide practice, but as a study guide or a uh, overview to uh, to help help your study. If you have any comments to make it better, please email me at kendrick at the medschool dot com. Especially, I'd like uh, things that you think are important that I'm leaving out, or uh, anything that's inaccurate. And we'll try and make these better so we can all get more out of it. Thanks.